Hi, this is Attila16 and this is a video of uh, Wargame Airland Battle. So I will present to you a deck I have and I have this one actually since the beginning and it proven to be one of the most reliable deck uh, that I have for the Pact Faction. This is a deck which is uh, specialized uh, toward Russia, so it's limited to Russia unit. And there's no other bonus other than that. And uh, that means that I only have Russian troops. And I will now present you each of those units and explain to you the rationale behind it. So let's start with uh, the UAZ here, which I use. This is uh, an inexpensive command vehicle and I use it uh, mostly... I use this deck mostly for 10v10 and I nearly only play 10v10 to be honest. So um, this is a deck which is really effective in 10 v versus 10. So. I use the UAZ, which I have six of them. Usually that's sufficient for uh, 10 versus 10 because there's always other people that will uh, uh, bring command vehicle. So that's uh, good enough. This is the least expensive, so you can afford to lose it. And at the same time, uh, it does the job. It's that simple. Then I use the Ural, which is right here. This is a Ural. Uh, uh, 4320 so uh, this is the second type it costs 20 to call in but it has uh, much more supplies than uh, the previous version so the the thing is that the russian they rely on a lot on missile and as a result of this they will require much more supplies so having a, a more expensive uh, supply truck make more sense in this case so as a result of this i use this one i use also an mi 26 which as you can see is a quite a, a big thing and the two of them actually are equal uh, because you can call two the two of them are equal to an fob so this is a very big chopper a lot of, su of supply perfect to uh, create a kind of uh, uh, FOB but near the front line uh, where you can uh, reload your troops uh, quickly and repair them and since the two of them are equal to an FOB well that means that uh, it's like a mobile FOB but you need to be careful about it because the enemy will likely target it because they know the value of it so you just need to be careful okay when it comes to infantry i use vdv which are a really good uh, defensive unit and the reason for that is that they have six rpg rockets and the range on uh, those rpg are actually uh, higher than any other infantry it reach uh, 875 meter and normally that's like uh, 500 meter for other rpgs or such thing so as a result this unit is perfect to defend uh, towns and uh, that make them uh, an effective force and they are really good infantry as well for defending as long as you remain, remain static because the stationary gun well the pkm need to be stationary to fire on the enemy so i use them with the chopper which is an mi-24a and the reason why i use this uh, chopper specifically is first of all the speed is 300 km an hour so that chopper will get to position very quickly then you will land your troops into the town for example and preferably actually and what uh, happened next is that uh, the enemy chopper might come in and you will already take enough uh, with that chopper and you have 64 rockets uh, which will destroy any infantry you have a good gun which will shut down enemy chopper and you have missile which will potentially destroy a few vehicle for missile in this case so uh, but the thing is that uh, you don't want it to be the best uh, chopper ever because it's possible that the enemy will send a lot of uh, planes on tire and that kind of stuff which might completely slaughter your chopper so this uh, chopper, which is the MI-24A, is a good compromise because it has uh, the transport capacity of getting there quickly. It can support the troops which are landed. And at the same time, they're not the most expensive unit to lose. So that's a good way to use them. Now, the other infantry I'm using usually for the initial attack is uh, a P-Tier Conquerors. And this is an ATGM unit, 
which is the best Russian ATGM unit with a range of uh, 2.6 k- uh, meter or kilometer actually. Uh, and the accuracy is high, the AP power is high. You have eight rounds per unit. And uh, this is the unit uh, which you deploy into a town and they will likely uh, kill whatever vehicle will come your way, whether it's heavy or light. So this is an highly reliable infantry. At the same time, I use them with uh, Arden, defi- uh, well, experience level. And as a result, uh, uh, they will be very efficient. So at the same time, if I end up losing them, I don't plan to replace them because then the fight will go on using other units, uh, which are vehicle or planes or chopper, but not necessarily ATGM unit. And also uh, infantry uh, will be more the one used uh, to fight into town. So. Uh, this is a very specific unit which I only use at the beginning and that's why I want them to be as effective as possible. Then you have the the backup plan. If the first one <laughs> fail and your troops are not able to hold, you have those Moto Trelsky. Uh, Strelsky. Forget my Russian. And uh, these are essentially the infantry which I will qualify as the filler so these units uh, will come and either support replace or uh, complete uh, your two previous infantry depending how well they defend or if they are needed at all so it's possible that these guys that we have right here won't be even called during the battle at the same time if they have to be called in they are transported into a BMP2 of uh, uh, October 1986 and this is a BMP which has a 30 millimeter auto cannon and as a result this is very good against uh, light vehicle and infantry the range is fairly limited but uh, if you are in range uh, you might actually destroy a tank with that at the same time if you're not in range you have uh, the missile on it uh, which has a range of uh, 2.6 kilometer so and uh, very good accuracy very good ap power so this unit become a good trade-off between uh, range and firepower at close range with the the auto cannon and uh, it's uh, fairly expensive that's why i combine it with the least expensive russian infantry uh, but uh, this t- this uh, apc by itself is uh, a good uh, unit uh, to bring on the battlefield so if you don't need the infantry well you have the BMP so that's a good unit then I use the Spetsnaz and this time in MI24P and uh, first of all let's talk about the Spetsnaz uh, they have a speed of walking of uh, or running of 27 km an hour which is very good then they have a napalm launcher which make them ideal for a uh, forest fight they will destroy a unit uh, nearly at every shot of that napalm drawer and uh, for cqb purpose uh, they are uh, actually pretty good so for forest fight this unit is like the ultimate uh, russian unit so but uh, at the same time because it only has six round of napalm launcher you'd want them in quantity and uh, i use them with veteran as uh, skill which is still pretty high uh, but uh, i need them in number also i'm using them with an mi24p which is actually a very good attack chopper with a missile that has a range of uh, 2.8 uh, kilometer a speed of 300 kilometer an hour and eight uh, 18 8 80 uh, rockets to support so this is a unit which is uh, very good uh, to support your spetsnaz in the forest for example because with the 30 millimeter gun on top of that with the rockets it will destroy whatever infantry uh, it spot at the same time this is a good unit to have into your infantry classification because that means you don't need to have them into your chopper classification so that saves you 
the trouble of having them as chopper. So, and on top of that, you have infantry. So that's a good combo. And uh, this is a very effective unit, which I will mostly use for fighting in the wood or securing area against other infantry. And at the same time, the chopper will be a good uh, reserve unit, which can support either the defense or offense purpose of my army. And the speed of the Spitzen has also allowed them to sneak around if you want to push it that far. Now let's go into support. Now into support I'm using the Tungushka, which is right here. This is actually the most expensive one. And uh, the reason for that is that uh, this version, let's compare it. Yeah, okay. That's why. Uh, essentially the missile has a range of uh, 3.5 kilometer. Uh, against chopper that make it extremely effective against chopper and since the chopper usually have a maximum uh, range for their missile of uh, uh, 2.8 I think or 6 well this Tungushka outranged them so that means this is your perfect anti-chopper defense at the same time it's still fairly effective against plane uh, and the gun can be turned off and the gun is the radar element of this unit so as a result the enemy might bring uh, their anti-radar units to destroy them but if you have the gun turned off they won't be able to target them but uh, the thing is that this unit is particularly good against uh, chopper and if you want an anti-plane defense that's not necessarily the one because the range against airplane is fairly limited it's still very good but it's not as good as other units now let's go with the next one the Strela now this is a unit uh, which is more against plane even though it has less range than the previous one but the thing is that this one has uh, infrared missile and as a result of this uh, anti-radar missile cannot track them so this is a good unit which will be useful to support your advancing troops on the ground and also you have 12 uh, missile which is quite a bit and this will be good to shut down pretty much uh, anything around at the same time it's not the most expensive uh, anti-air so it's an expendable unit but uh, it's really all about uh, supporting your troop as they advance and this is a good uh, unit which you'll deploy in front of uh, your radar units to protect them. So that's uh, why I'm using this one. Then you have the Buck and this is <coughs> the Russian one. And this thing is truly amazing. Not only in size. But uh, if you look at the range against plane, it's uh, 4.5 kilometer, and against chopper is 2.8. So that means that it's able to shoot an enemy chopper at maximum range of the chopper missile range. So at the same time, I will not use them for that purpose because they are fairly slow. Uh, well, they're not that slow, but still, it's uh, mostly an anti-plane unit that you'll have and with that range you outrange even the best uh, anti-radar unit so as a result this unit is very good to shoot down anything in a radius of four kilometer so that's a good thing to use and at the same time you need to feed them with uh, ammo and when they are out of ammo i recommend turning off the radar until they refill this way they won't get destroyed because of uh, anti-radar missile. Also, I use these with maximum experience level. So as a result of this, they will likely manage to destroy a plane much more effectively, but I have them in very little number. But in a 10 versus 10, sometime you might end up having more of them for diverse reasons. Okay, that's it for that. <coughs> Then, uh, yeah, let's go with this unit. This is the least expensive mortar unit I can have in the Russian army. And that's why I'm using it. And I'm mostly using it for the smoke screen it can deploy. And this is why I sometimes use this unit. I don't use it much, but I don't use it as a killing purpose. I use it as a defensive purpose in my attack 
purpose. <laughs> so, and this is only in specific condition that I'll use this. So it's always nice to be able to deploy a smoke screen. And this unit is fairly mobile, 60 km an hour. And uh, the range is 4.2 km. So it's acceptable in order to create a smoke screen. But I will not rely on this to kill anything. So uh, that's why I'm using this. And let's move to the tank. Okay, T35. Now the Russian have quite a bit of tank, but uh, and each of them can be good in their own way. But uh, let's focus on those on my deck. So in this case, the T55. This is the most basic version you can have. It doesn't even have a machine gun. The accuracy is terrible. The AP power is okay, but could be better. The armor is seven, which is okay. It's more than an APC. Uh, but uh, yeah, overall it costs you 15 to call this. And uh, the reason is why would you have a such terrible unit in your army when you can have so much better? Well, this is like a unit which you can call in great number when you need them and in specific condition. So, for example, uh, you can do a recon in force and this is a, a unit which can afford to lose. <laughs> That's why I use them. It's, uh, and at the same time, if you make a, a move which is very dangerous, sometimes this can be the right unit to use because it's, um, it's easy to lose <laughs> and you can afford to lose it. And the, the autonomy is actually pretty good also. So uh, this is like a, a good unit to scout the enemy. So at the beginning when you want to know what kind of opposition you have. You don't want to waste your best unit on that. You want to waste troop that you can afford to lose. So this is why I use this unit. And now if you you are more certain of the kind of opposition you have and you want to defend, the T-72 is a good option. Uh, it has a good frontal armor and a good AP power if it does hit. It has a pretty bad accuracy, but uh, this is a good tank that can receive punishment. And that's why I use it. This is more like the when the front is defined and you want to either attack or defend. This is a good reliable unit for that purpose. And uh, it's good because of its armor. It can resist the enemy punishment. And that's why this is a good alternative to the T-55 or if you run out of TT55, well, you can bring those T72. Okay, now when it comes to have actual quality in your army and actual capacity to kill the enemy, uh, I will rely on the T64B. And what's interesting about this is that, first of all, in terms of armor, it's a little better than a T72. But what's interesting truly is the missile. It has four missiles which have a range of 2.6 km. And uh, this allows you to destroy the enemy from afar. And, uh, and then when it's out of ammo, it can still rely on the cannon, which has a range of 2.1 km. A pretty good accuracy, a pretty good AP power, and then uh, bad stabilizer, but uh, I think uh, this is a, a good tank. It's it costs 80. It's not. Uh, it's a good average tank. I will say. Now let's check what what I rely on in terms of quality tank. Now once you know what's happening in the battle, and you want to do a really good action here, well you can rely on the T64 BV which is in terms of armor nearly equal to or better than many T80. So this is a very re resilient unit which can take some punishment. At the same time it has the similar capacity to the T64B in terms of firepower. A little more range on the cannon, the missile are pretty much the same. That's why I T64B is good enough as well. 
but if you need more resistance in terms of armor, that's your unit. And it's not that expensive, it's uh, 136, but with this unit you can kill uh, quite a few enemy tanks. Uh, but uh, of course, you don't send them in front, you keep them in the rear, and this is like your last line of defense as well as offense. So this is a, and also for missile, but uh, this is why I will say uh, make a good uh, combo of those two T64. And the thing is also those T64 are very mobile when you compare them to other uh, units. For example, this one goes at 65 km an hour, this one 65 km an hour, while here it's 60 km an hour and here it's 50 km an hour. So this is a, a much more mobile unit. Also, what else is interesting about these? I think that's pretty much it. So let's go to Recon. Here I use uh, Spetsnaz, and the reason why I use Spetsnaz infantry is that they go at 33 km an hour on foot. Also, I use the KA 29TB, uh, which is a uh, very good resistant chopper it can receive quite a bit of punishment and survive at the same time it has 80 rockets which make it very effective to suppress the enemy destroy infantry and light vehicle and on top of that you have a pretty good cannon and that can shut down enemy chopper so that's a good uh, recon chopper but uh, here i will say that the spetsnaz are really the main interest of this unit uh, so you go into enemy territory or between enemy lines you land there and you send your spetsnaz sneaking across the forest and you go destroy their command vehicle in the back so this is your ultimate sneaking around unit that's why they are interesting then i use the mi9 which is the best recon unit for russian it has an exceptional optic which give it the great sight on whatever is around it at the same time it can serve as a bait for enemy fighters because enemy fighters seeing that will usually target target it so that's a good unit to have as well now when it comes to vehicle i use the btr 70 zalo this is a very good unit which is not that expensive very accurate which uh, make it effective against uh, vehicle it doesn't have a machine gun so it's exposed to chopper attack and uh, infantry i guess but uh, for sneaking around uh, very quickly at 70 km an hour this unit is very effective at the same time it's an effective tool for defense as well because you can call uh, 12 of them uh, very quickly to defend a position so that's worth it and this is a kind of uh, offensive defensive unit uh, because you can use them to go quickly into enemy territory before they get into position or you can uh, quickly deploy a defense with them uh, against vehicle of course uh, then you have the BMPT uh, which is a prototype unit of the Russian and this thing is uh, equal to a tank essentially it has a pretty good cannon which has a range of uh, 2.4 kilometer and uh, this cannon is actually pretty good in terms of uh, he power actually it doesn't have uh, ap power so that means this gun cannot uh, destroy tank as effectively as a tank but it can suppress infantry and stun enemy tank also, it has a Noto cannon, which is more the anti-tank power here of 30 millimeters. So it's good uh, to destroy enemy tank at the shorter range, though. You will have to be at uh, uh, 1.7 kilometer to be able to destroy enemy tank with this. Also, it has a grenade launcher, which is very good to stun and kill infantry and light vehicle. So this unit is a kind of specialized unit. Uh, it, it's uh, it's very good. It, it, the armor is 15, which is very high for a vehicle, and that make it uh, the ideal offensive vehicle against infantry position and light vehicle and a, a good defensive unit uh, against tank, for example. But this is a, a unit which I don't use that much. 
but it's a good unit. Then I use the uh, ZSU-234 Afghansky. And this is a unit which is all about deception, I would say. Uh, this is actually an anti-air, uh, which you can also use against uh, ground units. But uh, what's uh, interesting about this unit is that it appears as a tank. And as a result of this, the enemy which doesn't pay attention might uh, see it as a tank. But it's an anti-air and has anti-air capacity, so uh, you might end up being able to destroy enemy chopper with it and fire on um, enemy planes as well. Fairly limited range for that though. But uh, uh, what's fun about this is that it will damage the enemy and it will also scare them a little and surprise them in some case. So that's a useful unit. I will not rely on it for anything specific there, but <laughs> it's just uh, a, a good unit to bug the enemy, essentially. That's uh, what I will uh, qualify it as. Also, here in Chopper, I use the K40 Akula, and this is the only chopper I use because uh, uh, most of my chopper actually come from infantry. So this is an interesting aspect about uh, the way I build this deck is that uh, this is the only chopper I'll use because it's specialized and here on this case it has air to ground missile which have a range of 3.3 uh, kilometer which is very far so that might be a good unit to shoot down uh, anti-air for example if you have a visual on them uh, on top of that it has four air to air missiles so uh, it can shoot down planes chopper this is a, a very good specialized unit at the same time it's fairly weak in terms of strength so it might die very quickly and you can count on the enemy planes to target it so this is a, a very expensive unit also that you only want to use uh, uh, with the safety of it in mind but uh, for an initial push at the beginning it's good support uh, for your uh, chopper attack for example your infantry and chopper attack uh, at the same time uh, just beware of enemy planes okay now when it comes to plane here I use the MiG 25 BM which is uh, uh, you have two of them that's why I use it at the same time nowadays there are so many uh, anti-radar units that uh, uh, I mean on anti-air unit that you will have a hard time uh, finding the right moment to make an anti-radar strike so and uh, you want a backup plan if you lose your plane or at the same time you want at least two of them to target multiple radar so this is a good plane that you can rely on uh, to destroy radar it has a pretty good range 4.2 kilometer and at the same time uh, this is, uh, I think uh, I mostly choose this specific anti-radar plane because uh, you have two of them and it's not that expensive. So it's a good unit that you can afford to lose. Then I use the MiG-29M and now there's also the MiG-29S uh, which uh, people don't really see what's the big deal. But the thing is that the mig 29 well, in terms of air-to-ground capacity, there's not any difference other than the fact that uh, the second version has a better ECM, which might save him from receiving one missile. Uh, but uh, other than that, uh, the payload is the same and the capacity is pretty much the same. Uh, but the difference here is mostly uh, the missile. So uh, with the MiG-29M, MiG uh, you have a missile which are fire and forget. So that means that uh, if your plane goes straight toward its objective, it see a plane, it will fire on it, the missile will guide itself to it. While with the, the other plane, uh, the missile, the plane will guide the missile to it. So if the plane goes off uh, the visual of the plane, the missile will miss. Well, with this one, I guess the missile will continue to track and probably hit. It has a shorter range, but I guess in terms of accuracy, this might be a better idea for air-to-air. -air. At the same time, 
uh, I guess that allows it to engage multiple targets in a row without caring much about uh, the missile it fire, so that can be practical, but if you only use this plane for payload and not so much for air to ground uh, air to air purpose, well I guess uh, the other version might be uh, better and less expensive. So that's why I use this one. Then SU-27S. This is a uh, like your ninja of the hair essentially. This thing can destroy anything which is flying even uh, eagle have trouble uh, with this one because this thing turns so fast it's crazy. The ECM is also exceptional which allows it to dodge a few missile. But uh, truly this thing is uh, all about uh, dog fighting and shutting down uh, a large amount of uh, enemy planes. And this is why I use it. Uh, I guess uh, if you're not into micromanaging a dogfight, you can potentially replace this with the, a MiG 31M, which has a super long range, 11 uh, uh, kilometer range. Uh, it's equivalent to an F 14. But uh, in terms of effectiveness, I guess it's not as uh, amazing as uh, the. Uh, SU-27 so yeah I'll go with the SU-27 because with this one if you're in a good if you use it at the right moment you can end up shooting down two or three planes in a row so that's why this plane is amazing okay then I use the M at uh, the MiG 27 M and what's interesting about this specific one is that uh, it has air to ground missile which are fire and forget as four of them and as a result you can use it kind of like uh, an a10 uh, will use it, its uh, maverick missile so what you do is you deploy it and circle in behind your line and as the enemy tank appear they will shut it down and likely destroy them in one shot even abrams so uh, i saw this plane kill so many enemy it's crazy at the same time it's not uh, the uh, best dog fighter but it's a good plane nonetheless and i think what the main feature is here is really the fire and forget missile which are infrared so and the range is 3.3 uh, kilometer so that's pretty good and i you have two of them so that's a really good plane to have now when it comes to uh, destroying enemy infantry i will rely on the yak 38M. Uh, this is uh, not particularly expensive. It has a good payload. It's perfect to destroy enemy uh, infantry and light vehicle. So with those uh, Fab uh, 500 bombs, it has four of them. Now there's another version which uh, has uh, four bombs but of a smaller uh, size. I will not use these. I prefer this one because the payload is strong enough. 17 HE power while the other one it's 11 so this one is really strong it doesn't go fast and you will likely lose this plane but uh, for what it does it's a really amazing plane and so you have your unit here which is against infantry and you have your unit here big 29 which is against tank and uh, vehicle and you have your MiG-27, which is against uh, heavy tank. Then you have your MiG-25, which is good against uh, radars. And your SU, which is good against planes. So essentially all aspects of the battle will be covered. So I hope uh, that gives you a good idea about how this deck works. And uh, take a good look at it here. And I will give it a try and we'll see what happened okay so i'm using my useless deck which is my russian deck and it's really reliable from where the name it's to confuse the enemy okay so uh, I, this is a, a 10 versus 10 game so i don't really know my allies here and they seem really unpredictable right at the beginning so we're missing uh, one player here, so I will fill that duty. And as a result of this, I will go attack Leonid. 
uh, which is actually pretty good for the deck I'm using. So we'll need two UAZ here in order to capture those two zones. Then I will bring in VDV infantry, eight of them, in my MI-24. Uh, and then I will bring my ATGM unit, which I will deploy likely into that town over here. And I think uh, that's all I can bring for the moment because I have to have uh, at least uh, three command vehicles. Although what I could do is remove one and uh, I will call in uh, the Constantine one from Le Michael, assuming that this that I here capture Michael. So, okay, I will announce my intention to go to Leonid so that nobody worries about it. And that will also likely mean that I will be alone against uh, everybody at Leonid. So I can only rely on myself. But I think I will go with actually... Uh, oh, it's hard to choose. So my objective here by attacking Leonid will be to capture uh, those towns here. They are the crucial ones. They are the one that you absolutely need to capture. Okay, my first UAZ will go here, while the other one will go hide into that small line of forest here. I will send my VDV to capture this town over here, in order to prevent any attack from uh, the left side. And I will send more VDV over here. Um, I teach EM unit, it's kind of a dilemma where to send them. I will send one group here so that ATGM will cover the sentry over here. While my other group of ATGM will go in here, so they will uh, cover that axis over here. And I will send VDV at the entrance of that tunnel on that side. And another group on uh, the right side of the town to prevent the enemy from coming uh, from the forest. Okay, first UAZ in position. Now my MI-24 are now uh, over town. I will land my troops and hopefully uh, there won't be much opposition there. Okay, landing my VDV which will uh, provide a good uh, uh, defense of the zone. Okay, some UE are coming over there. I think I will chase them down with my MI-24. My MI-17 are landing my ATGM unit. Now you can see that the enemy brought some uh, Delta Force which are quickly disposed of by my MI-24. I will bring more MI-24 over here in order to ensure uh, that nobody comes into the forest. I will bring my MI-17 over here. Well, here what I'll do is I will call in my recon infantry. Oh, now you can see the enemy force here. These are Hall Bradleys. And they are suppressing my troops. My MI-24, which I carelessly uh, let into uh, attacking over there. Okay, now you can see the effect of my MI-17. They essentially stun the enemy Bradleys. Which is a very good news for me indeed. And now they're also killing the enemy infantry as well. So I'm essentially destroying the entire enemy force now. While here I will take the risk to send my KA-29 with three guns into uh, the valley over here. While here the enemy Bradleys are being slaughtered pretty badly. So I will land my KA-29 here. I will land my uh, Sped Snaz uh, in that valley and then I will send them on foot to um, attack the enemy.
I will scout ahead. Okay, now the enemy is actually sending some uh, reinforcements uh, to defeat my chopper. But the thing is that uh, they won't be fast enough. Okay, it's time to land my troops here. There's a chaparral here, which is a little dangerous. And he, he did fire at least one round on my uh, choppers, but he missed. Okay, it's time to pull back here. I will steal the supplies from my ally on that side. While my infantry Spetsnaz will now sneak around here. At the same time, since I destroyed that many enemies here, I might assume that there's nobody defending that position. So I will send my KA-29 to attack over there. At the same time... I guess I don't really have anything to do more. So right now I'm just pulling back my choppers. Because they did their duty. And now let's see who's the most useful to loot. Okay, that's bad etiquette, but I will go loot the guy in the center because he's probably busy elsewhere anyway. Okay, while I'm at it, I guess I will bring some T-55 here just to cover the entrance of that valley, so I will send them there. They are not particularly expensive. And here the command vehicles seem to be hiding somewhere. He might actually be in the town. I'll check about that. Oh, no, he's right there. Okay, now that we know where he is, let's hunt down the other ones. So that's one less. Now let's go... Yeah, of course uh, the enemy uh, is uh, chasing down my uh, chopper here. And I guess that's why the K29 um, are useful. It's because they can receive the punishment. Look, it take two passage for the F-15 to actually destroy them. Okay, while here I noticed that there's uh, some chopper. I will send two group of Spetsnaz to the left and one group to the right. Now they did manage to shut down my chopper, which is unfortunate. But here's the thing is that uh, I'm really uh, using my, uh, my chopper simply as recon here. And uh, destroying center was good enough for me. Did not really have to do uh, anything more. I think here I will send some infantry. There seem to be some enemy vehicle coming here. So I will... I will send some uh, infantry over there to defend. It's highly possible that the enemy will switch its, its uh, focus from uh, the side here where he won against uh, me on that town here. So I'll move my VDV on the side of the town here in order to be more effective. At the same time, considering that uh, the enemy can likely attack me from the side here, I guess I will... Uh, I will build up uh, an air defense. So for example, I will deploy some buck launcher. Actually, let's uh, let's deploy all the buck launcher on this position right here. Okay, so my BMP now have reached the hills over there. I'll land my motor rescue, which will provide uh, an early uh, um, warning system, I guess. Well, on this side, I guess I should probably build up uh, stuff here as well. Now, let's see. Globally, we're winning, which is the good news. But uh, we'll see uh, about that in the future. My Spetsnaz are scouting ahead. I guess I should probably bring uh, more Spetsnaz. Although they are fairly expensive at the moment. 
Well, on that side, there's some inf uh, artillery in there, which my Spetsnaz could be actually good at uh, taking out. And the enemy is likely all focused on attacking this position here, which I could either go help or not. We'll see. Also, there's two uh, uh, supply FOBs there. So we'll see about this. Well, I guess I'll destroy uh, these artillery. At the same time, I'm not particularly happy about the fact that I have to destroy artillery first. So let's destroy the command vehicle. Oh, there's another one. I got one, but there's more. So I already did dispose of two artillery pieces, but there's still one more command vehicle in there. So let's kill another artillery piece here. There we go. I guess I will divide my Spitznaz into two groups in order to be more effective at scouting this area. Well, here I will... Uh Where is that command vehicle? <laughs> at the same time, I don't mind because I'm destroying the enemy artillery, which will likely be useful uh, on my side. I'm just starting to be low in ammo though. Okay, now the fact that I did capture one FOB here will allow me, f first of all, to uh, potentially refill my ammo, hopefully. Come on, refill. Oh, Martyr rolling. That's a good target. Expensive target on top of that. But I should not. Uh, Well, I destroyed the most of the defensive units in there, but uh, that's not enough. I need to find the command vehicle. Well, here my Spetsnaz are also moving here. Okay, I seem to have uh, managed to find the command vehicle. It's a grizzly. So let's destroy this grizzly. Sadly, the grizzly is a little more of a danger. Nope, oh, Shepherd here. <laughs> you can see that uh, I'm really doing uh, the job uh, in the back. So, two less Shepherd to worry about. As a result, I didn't manage to secure this area. I will uh, deploy my Spitznaz into the woods so that. Uh, well, actually, I will. Uh, uh, I will pull back one group. Yeah, let's pull back one group. Now, there was some chaparral here, but I did not see a command vehicle, though. This is kind of ridiculous. The, the enemy did manage to spot my Spetsnaz. And now I uh, even receive some uh, artillery. Yeah, we'll send my Spitznaz on that hill in order to have a good view on everything around. Whoa, th these are some uh, Abrams. That's a little overdoing. But uh, the impression that gives me is that uh, the enemy likely has a command vehicle in that forest over there. Okay, well, here I'll spread out my troops. And I guess now that uh, we might have a little angle on the enemy here, I might think about uh, doing an attack. I guess what I'll do here is I will call in some uh, more Spetsnaz, which I'll land right here. And I will use them to scout it. I will also bring in a scout chopper. Because right now I'm, I'm uh, only harassing the enemy in the back. That's not enough. And the enemy is uh, 
investing uh, quite a lot of attention on uh, taking care of my troops over there. Well, for my part, I should probably build up some force, chopper force in this case, which I'll support with uh, some uh, troops over here. And I will advance with my troops on the side here slowly and carefully. Well, anyway, I did uh, inflict quite a few damage to the enemy in Anna. I destroyed uh, all their artillery support and uh, on top of that uh, I destroyed two command vehicles. Well, here I will scout with my KA-29. I will land these. No, actually, I won't land my FEDV. I will use them uh, to capture the enemy ahead. I will bring in some uh, T-55, which I'll deploy uh, near that position over there. Uh, you can see that the enemy is actually sending some kind of chopper over here. This is a scout defender and now you can see my KA uh, take care of that. So I did dispose of that uh, defender fairly quickly. Now you can see here that there's some Roland Seahawk. And here what I'll do... I uh, know I do know that there's at least one Chaparral over there. Yeah. As you can see here, he's shooting me. I will have to dispose of this. At the same time, here I should probably bring in some uh, anti-air because I will need uh, anti-air capacity, assuming I'm attacking that position right there. So I guess I'll use my Spetsnaz and I'll try to capture this, that area as quick as possible. At the same time, I guess I could probably just uh, harass the chaparral with uh, one of my KA-29. Because um, yeah, by using that, uh, I might be able to uh, make him waste his uh, ammo. Okay, now let's send those motor Strelsky. I will uh, send them into uh, that area over there. Okay, you have some Roland over there, which uh, deserve to be killed. So let's destroy these Roland. Because uh, these will uh, truly be a danger to my uh, uh, troops. Okay, coming missile. That's against. Uh okay, I'll send my Spetsnaz into that building here, which seem to have ATGM. So Spetsnaz will be the perfect weapon to get rid of that. At the same time, they are under fire by a luch. So I'll destroy the ATGM Milan in there with my Spitznaz. Well, here my uh, other Spitznaz are making their way to the Luch. And here I will also dispose of that Chaparral with my vehicle. There we go. So with very few troops here, I actually did secure the area. Now at the same time, uh, there's more ATGM units over there. I will pull back my troops into the forest here and I will storm this one uh, with uh, a few uh, of my troops. Now what I'll do here, it's a little bit uh, of a risk, but I will call in my uh, MiG-29 and I will hurt the enemy quite a bit thanks to my visibility at the moment. Okay, so MiG-29 will fly right here and then I will target the enemy command vehicle in Anna like that and I will target 
the other command vehicle, which is on Grizzly. Okay, now you can also see that my MiG-29 has destroyed a Thunderbolt. And I will now actually advance with uh, my KA chopper. So, bombs away on this, this uh, Grizzly over there. Bombs away on the Grizzly over there. You now have two zones which are under our control. And what I'll do here is I will actually send my uh, MI-24 to secure this area over there. I will bring my BMP into that zone over here. Now my Spetsnaz are securing this area there. Now let's see what kind of troops I can bring. Oh, I can bring ATGM units over here. Very nice. So my MI-24 will prevent any... Uh, well actually, not my MI, but my... Uh, my VDV will prevent any uh, troops from... Uh, well, any command vehicle from crossing that pass here. So this is a very smart move on my part. I'm just amazed at myself at the moment. Or uh, actually, it's more a contextual uh, amazement, I should say. Now, I will pull back my MI-24 because they did their purpose. So I will deploy my VDV into a defensive position on that path. Now I have my MI-17, which I'll deploy into that position over there, which will prevent the enemy from uh, pulling back. This is quite a, quite an amazing move I just did there. I I'm uh, very lucky, I think. Okay, so now I did secure the area here. Now there's some planes around. It's time to bring in the SU-27 so landing my MI-17 into that building or actually crashing my MI-17 into that building and I do have uh, some uh, troops in there at the same time let's see I have quite a few chopper here which I will use to destroy those hogs at the same time, here I have my SU-27, which deserve to have the chance to destroy a Thunderbolt. So you can see them uh, on their way over there. Now the enemy Thunderbolt is pulling back. I will switch target. We'll destroy the other Thunderbolt. Destroyed one. Chasing down the other one. There's some starfighter switching target. Now this is quite uh, the fight here. Switching to destroy the Falcon. Evacuating out of ammo. I lost one SU, uh, but I killed a few enemies. Okay, well here, yeah, sadly, uh, it seems that the Hogs uh, saw my move and pulled back. I uh, will uh, then pull back my own chopper, which are now being decimated. Uh, at the same time here, I think I'll bring some Tungushka. Uh, at the same time, uh, the enemy here seem to be advancing on that side, but that's okay. Now NATO is actually leading in terms of points, I don't know what uh, my team did or did not do. But uh, we'll see about that. At the same time, it might have been uh, me which uh, lost uh, quite a few uh, troops. Now, what I'm lacking right now is truly anti air. Okay, so let's see. So my VDV are securing this uh, passage here, and you can see why now. Look at this, there's a grizzly coming. There we go, that grizzly is down. At the same time, I'll move my 
VDV around. And here's the thing, uh, which is, uh, I think, this is uh, uh, truly something I cannot do anything about. My uh, team is not aggressive enough. They're not pushing uh, where they should, and uh, they're fighting where they should not, I guess. So it seems the fight is now in that area here. But I guess uh, what I should do now is uh, probably build up air defense in this area. So I will also... Uh, yeah, okay, uh, I will do my part and I will build up an attack on that side over here. I will send my Strela to intercept uh, whatever enemies are around. around. Now my BMP2s are intercepting those hugs with the auto cannon, and as you can see, they are pretty good at it. While here, my VDV are intercepting the supplies, which I guess is a good thing for my VDV. <laughs> now you you can really see uh, all the good things that comes out from uh, my move. But uh, what really matter right now is to uh, move my uh, troops uh, so that they can um, well that I'll have air support. So they they seem to be bombarding the forest here against my poor BMP, which will likely die. But they keep missing, which is something uh, that I find kind of amazing. Why are they attacking so much? Oh, there's another command vehicle. <laughs> so, another command vehicle just died. Now, I think that uh, my team uh, is uh, not winning right now, but uh, on my part, uh, I think I did my, my fair share. Definitely. So here I will bring a chopper with supplies to resupply my anti-air. Here the, the enemy is sending infantry to secure the forest. My, mar my VDV are intercepting them and killing uh, quite a few martyrs. At the same time these are Panzer Grenadier. So they are out outnumbering my VDV. I will pull back my VDV in the forest so they can resupply from that uh, supply truck without attracting the attention, please. There we go. Please don't die, don't die. Oh, there's a con another command vehicle here. Okay, fortunately my uh, troops did not die. As a result of this, they might be able to uh, Resupply and the command, the enemy command vehicle keep going. So as a result of this, my VDV, oh well, <laughs> my VDV here will likely destroy that command vehicle. There we go. It's like I'm sorry, you won't know, you will not be able to resupply your troops. So that's the funny part about it. Well, here my allies are managing to finally take this position. And actually now the the difference uh, is in our favor. We're gaining in points. So that means that my strategy is starting to pay off. At the same time here the Tungushka are intercepting enemy air force. I will turn off uh, the radar so that the prowler don't see me. Prowler down. Tungushka are killing the enemy air force. I will spread out my Tungushka clicking X. At the same time here, my Strela will be into defensive position as well. My MI here is uh, resupplying my troops. So you can see here that just by deploying my troops here, the enemy is totally unable to uh, do anything about it. 
Now, of course, they can bombard and ultimately they will defeat my troops. But uh, in the end, I'm inflicting a substantial amount of da damage to the enemy. And this is it. This is a draw. And I think it's largely because of me. Uh, let's see how well I did. I did 5,000 in damage. And as you can see, I did not even use half of my deck. <laughs> so this is all about... Uh, how well you use your deck because uh, in this case I will say that my air force was the main strength but uh, in the end it's my uh, infantry which turned out to be the main strength and my anti-air as well because my Tungushka ended up killing a substantial amount of enemies and let's see uh, the proof about that so you can see here my MI-17 which did kill quite a few infantry at the beginning of course, the guy could have played better, but still. Scared that at the beginning, I really did hurt uh, the enemy offensive by killing all those Bradleys and the infantry on board. But uh, here's my Spetsnaz. So if you use your Spetsnaz well, uh, you can see the efficiency of them. So uh, I they killed quite a few enemies. And other Spetsnaz as well. And yeah, the... My troops really did uh, work well. Well, my Tungushka even uh, shut down uh, an F-117. Uh, VDV killed a few martyr command vehicle. So that was a really good round. I'm very satisfied with it. Now, sadly, I did not cover all units, but uh, I think you get the idea. So I hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you on the next one. If you have a preference of which faction you would like to see, tell me.